Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and last episode I posed a question. Does anybody know where I can get software for the Alinko DJ VX50? Because honestly, it was hard to find. It wasn't even on Alinko's website. And since then, Alinko's website has been shut down or they lost their web hosting. So it was completely difficult. But a very kind viewer popped in and said, hey, you can get the Alinko software at this website. And he gave me a link. So I'll go ahead and post the link below where you can get that software. And because of it, though, I was able to figure out how to make a programming cable for this radio. If you're looking to make a programming cable for the DJ VX50, which is the ERW7 cable, stick around. Welcome to Ham Radio, dude. Don't forget to subscribe or I might break your bowfong. Getting started, I'm going to tell you everything you need, and I'm going to kind of tell a story along the way as well. But I do want to thank directdirt.com. I'll link them below because they were a website I found that had the schematics to build this. And it took me a long time to find it, and that's why I wanted to make a video. Not just that, but a lot of people learn better by seeing something being done as opposed to just reading the schematic. First thing you're going to need is a USB to TTL adapter. This happens to be an FTDI based chip. And it's the bottle FT232. Now, there are plenty of other chips out on the market or adapters on the market, such as this one, which is a CH340G, and you've seen me use in prior episodes, as well as the CP2102, which I did confirm this one was working with uh, the setup that I'm going to do today. But I ultimately went with this FTDI chip, this FT232, because it tends to be more reliable, or it seems to be more reliable. So I bought this on Amazon and I think it was about $12. Next up, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter TRS jack. I've heard of people cutting random stuff around the house to get that jack, but I just bought another one of these on Amazon. It was pretty cheap. You're also going to need some wire. I think this is 22 gauge, maybe even a little bit smaller. I have laying around the house. You're going to need a resistor, which typically a 10K or pretty close to a 10K resistor. And then you're going to need a diode, which is a 1N4148 diode. Hopefully you know how to solder if you do. And I know I say solder incorrectly, but just let me have my moment. If you don't know how to solder, uh, I'm sure you could probably figure out something like using a breadboard or something along those lines. And as you can see here, that's how I test everything. I use a breadboard. Uh, but I am going to also be soldering everything correctly today. And there is one more thing you're going to need, and that's going to be a radio that supports the ERW7 programming cable, such as the Alinko DJ VX50. Something you may want to have not necessarily completely required is a multimeter, and that's to test continuity and make sure you have everything hooked up correctly. Again, I said it's not required, but it really does help. Jumping into this, my first step is to take the wire and cut about two equal lengths of wire. In this case, I used blue and white. You could use any color, it doesn't matter. But you'll put the wires together, and from the middle, you'll just start twisting them around so you get a nice little braid. And then you have two open ends. Now next up, we'll take this 3.5 millimeter jack, and we'll take our wire, and you'll notice I put the sleeve or the jacket over the wire so that when I'm done soldering everything, I could screw in this little jacket for a protective cover. Now we have a couple options. We could put our diode and our resistor in here, but I think it'll just get too tight. So we're going to put it down here in just a moment. And again, I just want to make it clear that I got this schematic from directdirt.com. It looks like N0DIM is the person who made the schematic. So I want to make sure I'm giving plenty of credit. The link again is below. Let's just go ahead and walk through this thing left to right. We're going to start with the stereo plug. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the ground. The ground is the conductor or the section that's closest to the jacket. And in this case, it's right here. And so what you're going to do is you're going to solder ground, and I'll show all that to you in just a moment, but it's going to go straight to the ground on the USB. You're then going to have one more wire that comes off the stereo jack, and that wire is actually going to be the uh, TXRX, we'll call it. And basically what's going to happen is the center conductor that's on this three pin jack, the center conductor is going to go to RX, but there's a little bit of an exception. As it's going to RX, it's going to actually have a point where it splices, if you will, and it's going to go to a diode, and the diode's going to go to the TX, 
and then it's going to have a 10K resistor. The 10K resistor is going to go to the VCC. I want to provide a little bit of instruction or clarification on this step as well. So you have this, we'll call it a headphone jack or a TRS jack, and you'll notice mine is a three pin. The schematics almost look like it's a four pin, as you could see, and it may have been that way. So here's a four pin. But since we're not using a four pin, let's just ignore that for a moment and look at this three pin. Well, on the schematics, it shows ground goes to ground, and that's not going to change. So we're going to go ground, which is typically this post right here, and we're going to bring it out to ground on the USB. You have two posts, one on either side of the ground, and depending on how you're looking at it, it's going to be this post regardless. But if you're looking at it kind of looking down, it's going to be the post on the right. And if you're looking at it from an angle like this, it's going to be on the left. But this post right here is going to be the center post. And if you have any questions, that's where you could use your multimeter. For the next step, I'm going to use a little development board. However, you could just, like I said earlier, use a breadboard. Or you could directly solder the wires to the diodes and everything. But I'll show you with the perf board or the development board, excuse me. Here we have our TRS cable and we have two wires coming off of it. Again, it's ground and what is transferring data. You're going to see that I actually have one wire that goes to ground and it doesn't go to anything yet. And then one wire that goes to the actual resistor and diode. Here's a better photo for you. I will end up putting a ground wire that goes from the blue wire into the USB. And then the white wire is the data wire, which then all these are connected. So you have a diode that goes over to what is going to be the uh, TX wire, and then you have a resistor which is going to go over to the VCC. I just wanted to show you what a final design would look like, and let's start at the top. You have the blue wire on the right. Well, and hopefully yours looks a little better than this. But you have the blue wire on the top right, and that comes from the headphone jack, and the white wire below that also comes from the headphone jack. Now we recall that the blue wire was ground, so that ground on the right goes to the blue wire on the left, which goes to ground on the USB port. And now we go down to the white wire. You have your white wire, which comes in from the headphone jack, and then it goes down to a diode. The diode goes to the red wire. That red wire is going to plug into the TX port of the USB device. Going back to the white wire, the next thing we see is a resistor, and that 10K resistor is going to go to the green wire, which goes to the VCC. And finally, we have our white wire on the left, which is going to go to our RX port on the USB. Because I chose to use a prototype board, I also needed some kind of case to put the board into. I found an old broken case laying around the house, and I put the board in there for now, just laying in there. In the future, I will hot glue the prototype board to the actual interior of the case, but for now, this works fine. And, you know, I could have easily used Cat5 cable for the wires that go to the USB, but really I wasn't thinking, so I ended up using heat shrink to put all the wires together and kind of keep them organized. So now it's time to finally plug in everything and make sure that it's working. So what I do is I go into Device Manager, and then I plug in my USB drive. You'll notice that my port section, the tree is actually down so I can see everything under port. And when I plug in the USB drive and the radio in this case is off, although I don't think it really matters, you could see that USB serial port COM13 popped up. And if I double click on that, I can see it's the FTDI chip. So I'm pretty sure that this is it. And I'm just going to click OK and then I'm going to minimize this for just a moment. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down the squelch button which is on the left side of the Alinko DJ DX50. It's the middle button. And I'm going to turn the radio on. And if I do everything correctly, it should go into clone mode. And it says clone ready. So that's great. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, communication port. And when I do, it takes a minute to load and to check all the communication uh, ports to make sure, you know, which ones are available. 6, 7, and 13 in this case. Since 13 is the one that we have for the FTDI chip, we're going to click it and click OK. So now we have the communication port set. We need to go to program and we're going to read from radio. And since we're in clone mode, it should read from the radio just okay. I get a pop-up that says 
you wish to continue, I'm going to click OK. And then you probably can't see it, but in the lower right, there you go. It's reading the radio now. So everything's looking good. Provided it reads the radio, we'll try to write to the radio. And we'll see how that works. And then what I'm going to do in the next episode, I'll show you how to do a Mars mod if you wanted to, to expand the frequencies on your radio for whatever reason. And then in the episode after that, I'll go through how to program frequencies on the radio via the software and via the actual front panel. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up with a fifth episode where we will, and you probably can't see this, let's see, reading complete. And we'll finish it up with another episode where I just go over again a total review of this radio. So now that it says reading complete, let's say I wanted to make a change. Let's say I didn't want this channel name in here, or I just wanted to call it AS or All Star. I'm going to go then to program and write to radio. It says, do you wish to continue? I'm going to click OK. And now it shows that it's written. And you'll notice I said writing because I believe that's how it's spelled. Um, anyway, you know, so it's going to write to the radio. And once this is done, we pretty much confirm that the programming cable is working. I could then go into certain programs like Chirp and see if I can figure out how to get this radio to work in Chirp or whatever experimenting I'm going to do. There we go. Write successful. And just to show you, write successful. So that's how to make a programming cable and the experience I walked through to make the cable. I recognize there's a lot of ways to do it, and this probably wasn't the best way. Uh, really easily, you could have just taken a piece of wire, uh, you could have spliced a wire, you could have put your diode there, you could have put your resistor there. Completely fine. I just had things laying around and I, I wanted to do it. But I did run into one more issue, and if you have a problem after you've confirmed that everything's absolutely correct, I had a... 3.5 millimeter jack and it maybe wasn't quite the correct length or something because every time I plug it in it, the radio wouldn't read even in clone mode and so I had to slightly pull it out just ever ever so slightly uh, eventually I realized that I'm not going to use that jack and it's not worth my time so I just got a new jack and everything was fine but I did have that issue and it caused a lot of problems while trying to prototype and and build this thing because I couldn't get the radio to read <laughs> Uh, but you'll learn. And it's kind of like that like and subscribe button. You know, there's a, a bunch of different ways you could actually get to the like and subscribe button to hit it. But the end result is, is you've accomplished something. So go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons. But it's the same thing for the programming cable. Uh, you have the schematics. I walked you through one way to do it. And now you could decide on your own way or how you want to do it. Uh, but more importantly, it's all about documentation. And now we have some detailed documentation about how this cable works. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.